Hi and welcome to the presentation of the Swedish winners. The team is called Touch Tech and it consists of five members. Dennis Schaban and Sebastian Hartmann, who are software engineers and also the voices of this video presentation. Gustav Josefsson and Iman Habib, who are electrical engineers. And last but not least, our mentor Morten Fjell, who is a professor in human-computer interaction. Environments where whiteboards are used are often environments of creativity. Is it possible to incorporate all tools of creativity into the whiteboard, removing the needs for all meta tools? This leads us to a problem definition, which is How can you erase the problems with a traditional whiteboard while still preserving the feeling of using it? How can we also make it a more powerful tool? Here's a couple of sub-problems. Once the whiteboard is full and you want to continue working with it, your only choice is to free space by erasing its content. This is due to its content being static. When you erase the content, the information is lost. In order to not lose information, some people even write directly onto paper that they put on the whiteboard. However, it gets hard to store the paper or information for later use. Once you're finished using the whiteboard, you only end up with one end result and lack the rationale and the decision process that got you there. It's hard to understand a mathematical equation if you don't know the steps. Distributed end result material is hard to understand. Only the people that participated in the same room as the whiteboard experienced the true flow. How do we easily distribute the information on a whiteboard? How can we seamlessly capture, store and retrieve the knowledge from a session? How can we increase the experience factor to increase the participation of, for instance, students? We've come up with a solution for this called the Virtual Multi-Touch Whiteboard. It is based on a natural user interface paradigm which involves direct manipulation, multi-touch, multi-user. Here are some examples of how to use our software for educational purposes. Notice the level of similarity to a traditional whiteboard. Let's start off by explaining the line equation. By touching the whiteboard you'll draw black strokes. If you want to draw with another color, you use the brush tool which is started by doing a touch and hold gesture using your fingers. This gesture will bring up the menu which is connected to your fingers through the hand. The brush tool will always expand in front of your second finger and by dragging the finger onto the green color and lifting it there, a green brush tool context will appear. Drawing in this context will result in green strokes. Since we have multi-touch, more than one finger or person can interact with the whiteboard simultaneously. It is also possible to draw with two colors at the same time making it multi-user friendly. The brush tool context will disappear if they are inactive. Let's continue by drawing a straight line. No, a straight line. So, to erase the stroke, we first select it by doing a tap gesture and then erase the selection by doing the erase gesture. Now, let's do a straight line again. Once again, we select it in order to put it into the correct place in the graph. To move it to the correct place, you just use your hands with natural gestures. To deselect, simply do a tap gesture on the selection. If you want to save the figure for later use, for example as a template, you can use the lasso selection tool which is accessed from the menu at your first finger. As just seen, all selections can be manipulated with gest natural gestures. For complex subjects, it's not always easy to illustrate something using only strokes especially considering subjects like physics. All the equipment needed to show an experiment isn't always accessible and then it's great to have a tool with which you can show rich content such as media. Here is an example of the total internal reflection effect. Using the media tool to import video clip giving a better and easier understanding of it. To bring up the media tool you simply do the touch and hold gesture just as before but this time using three fingers. The media import tool will then expand from the third finger. By dragging your finger onto the video icon and lifting it, the video library will appear. Now let's find the video clip and drag and drop it onto the whiteboard.
Let's store the figure for later use by using the lasso selection tool again. All the information we put on the whiteboard is useless if we can't get it out of there. Therefore, we have created the possibility to watch the logical flow either from a live video stream or distributed as a file. This enables for absent users to still participate and understand the process for reaching the final result instead of ending up with just a static slide. It's also possible to use a real whiteboard eraser to erase the content of the virtual whiteboard. In the beginning we quickly realized that we won't be able to supply all the tools and functionality to cover all possible needs. The virtual whiteboard architecture was therefore designed to be extendable so that other parties easily can develop and plug in their own tools. All of the tools you've seen so far, which are the brush tool, the lasso selection tool and the media input tool are loaded as plugins using the managed accessibility framework. This means that the vi virtual whiteboard serves as a platform. We'll create a community of developers and users in order to continue developing the virtual whiteboard. This will also create a big business opportunity for us. At any point in time, we can resume the work in any of the selections. We can also compress everything further, even into a single pixel.